a lot, most of the time, I don't really sit at the piano and play and accidentally stumble across the melody. I like quiet. I hear it. And it begins with a feeling. I know what it feels like. It begins with, and once you have the feeling, then it's much easier to decide what is the first sound? What does it sound like? Is it going to be a bass note? Is it going to be a, a flute? Is it going to be a, a big hit from an or symphony orchestra? Is it going to be a, the Armenian doo doo? And then you kind of know how fast they should be or how slow. So it starts, it's like a pulling a thread, it reveals itself. And it's not an easy process, and it's something you learn over time. The most important thing is to surrender and no logic. The logic is the killer. Judgment. As soon as you judge what you're creating, see if you can follow me with this. It's, it's, it's a very important thing about creation, creativity. As soon as you realize what you're doing, you're not doing it anymore. You're outside looking in, and the creative process has stopped. You gotta be the music. So you just close your eyes and you hear it and it plays. It plays perfectly. In your mind, music is perfect. Every instrument is in tune. The drummer is playing on beats. It's not speeding up or slowing down. It is perfection in your mind. The process of destruction begins when you try to make it real. And you try to get the other to try to play it. Um, I don't, not a lot of people know this, but whenever we do videos and I'm involved in the lighting, the camera angles, where the position of the camera is, um, I make sure that everybody's lit correctly, you know, that we can capture their sound. And it's a choreography. It's not simple. In order to, to look at a video, you have to see the picture. The person who is playing has to look good, it has to be lit. And the camera has to be on them so that you have the picture. The microphone and the violin has to be in a specific spot within a quarter inch, or else the sound is no good. So there's a 20, 25, 30 different things that have to happen simultaneously to get a good video. And, and it is, it takes months of planning. And um, I spend a lot of years doing it wrong. Um, sometimes, we, you know, we started a long, long time ago, especially with acoustic <coughs> instruments like violins or flutes or again, and the exotic instruments that I work with. Um, just learning where to position the microphone and how, how to do it. And uh, what you will see this time is as the best of what we've learned in the past 20 years of doing this. And I think the sound, from what I understand, the new arena here is beautiful and the sound is phenomenal. It's a world-class place. So the audience should really, really enjoy the sound. I have two of the best sound engineers in the world. One of them used to do sound for Pink Floyd. Um, they know what they're doing. It's, it's a great time because I'm old enough, I have done enough, I have traveled, uh, enough. Um, I have realized a lot of my dreams. Um, one of the most important thoughts is that I don't feel like I have anything to prove anymore to anyone, which is very freeing. I still care about my concerts and I still care about what the audience is going to think and I still work really hard to give them the best I can all the time. But it, there's a freedom, there's a relaxation that comes with that. Um, and I like when I go to different countries and they accept me. Um, I, I never forget the Puerto Rican audiences and how <laughs> amazing they were with me. And they were chanting and that told all means they were going to be the loudest audience in the world. And there we are. <laughs> <laughs> and, and never, I'm never going to forget that.